Maths in isolation. This is proofs. Proofs of all those things that I meant to prove, that I meant to do hundreds of times. God, I'm, I'm really moving slowly, aren't I? You don't think I've slowed this video down, do you? I think I did. I've slowed the whole thing down to try and get the things in. Anyway, all the proofs. All the proofs fit to print. That's what it is. So we'll start with proof number two. It's numbered one to ten, but you don't have to do all ten of them. You only have to do five. The measure of the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. You're used to this. And we have to consider the different sections of the proof. First of all, we have what we are given. We're given, basically, a triangle. I'll draw the triangle in. There we are. I'm going to draw the triangle in. Oh, well, finally, I draw the triangle in, and I numbered each of the angles. And then... I say what I need to prove. In this case, what I need to prove is that the three angles add up to 180. And then I have to do a specialist construction. Now, this is something I add to the diagram, the basic diagram, because I need it for the proof. In this case, it's a line that I'm going to draw this line in red across the top of the triangle there, parallel to the bottom. So it's parallel to the bottom. I number the angles, which I've created on either side of the angle number three. I angle them four and five. Now, of course, that's the straight line angles. Four, three and five are the angles of a straight line. And if they're the angles of a straight line, all I have to say for the first line of the proof is that the three angles together add up to 180. That's because they're the angles of a straight line. Now, four and one and five and two are related because they're the lines are parallel because the red and the bottom line are parallel. So 1 must be equal to 4 and 2 must be equal to 5. These are called alternate angles. This is just a specialist of parallel lines. They're only because the lines are parallel are these alternate angles the same. Well, if 1 is equal to 4 and 2 is equal to 5, then 3 plus 1 plus 2, we can replace the 3 the 4 with a 1 and the 5 with a 2, and we get 180, or changing their order so it looks more like the what we started off with, we can simply write this as 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 180. And then we write QED. QED signifies that we have proved it. So we put the QED afterwards. It'll turn up in a minute. Give it a moment. But the basic thing is that because 2 is equal to 5, we can replace the 5 with the 2. Here we are, QED. I knew it was coming. There you go. I have slowed this down a bit from when I shot it, which is why it's doing this bizarre thing. Anyway, so that's your entire proof. And now we'll move on to the next proof, which I can see coming up because I'm doing this on iMovies. And the next movie is, whoa, beautiful, exterior angles. So actually, the construction is all one thing. It's a triangle with a little extra tail. And I'm trying to prove that 1 is equal to 3 plus 4. And the first part of the proof is that 1 plus 2 is equal to 180. OK, that's 1 plus 2 is 180. If you look at 1 and 2 on the diagram, you can see that they are once again the angles of a straight line. Now, the way to look at this is to look as if a protractor is coming in, you see? The protractor is 180 degrees, and that is a complete 180. The second thing we can say is that 2 plus 3 plus 4 are also 180 because they're the angles of a triangle. So we can equate them. 1 plus 2 must be equal to 2 plus 3 plus 4. But 2 is in both of them, if you can see. And with all things which are on both sides, we can cancel them. We can take the 2 from the left-hand side and the 2 from the right-hand side. And what we're left is 1 is equal to 3 plus 4, which once again is what we were looking for at the top. So this is a question of equating. You've equated the angles of a straight line with the angle of a triangle. So... That's that one. Right, next. What's the next proof? Mm, here we are. Opposite angles. Now, in this proof, the idea is basically to remember the whole diagram. The parallelogram, which is a square, or a rectangle rather, which has been sat on, with a diagonal. And all the angles are labelled internally. 
So what you're trying to prove is that the two triangles, the upper and lower one, are the same. So the main section of the proof is to look at those two triangles. ABC, the one at the top, and ADC, the one at the bottom. And that's your aim, is to prove that they are identical, or as we say, congruent. The congruent triangles. So the first thing to say is that 1 and 4 must be the same by alternate angles. And of course then the sharp-eyed amongst us will see that 2 and 3 must also be the same by alternate angles. A and C are common to both triangles. We call them common. So we've got two angles and a side that gives us congruence by what's called ASA, angle side angle. So the two triangles must be the same because an angle, then a side, then an angle. This means that AB must be equal to CD because they have equivalent sides and AD must be to BC and that the two angles at B and D must also be equal, which is what we were trying to prove. Essentially, by proving the two triangles are the same, we have proved what we were looking for. We have proved the idea that the triangles are congruent and by proving they are congruent, we have proved that all of the things we wanted to prove are true. Now to the proof which is easiest to remember because it's the Star Trek proof. You're trying to prove the angle at A is half of the angle at O, or the angle at O is twice the angle at A, whichever way you write it. To do this, you're going to have to construct a line. So we have a construction which splits A and O off. You basically have a line which joins A to O and then extends onwards. Right, now the next thing we then need to do is the number of all the created angles. So I'm just going to put numbers in here for all the angles that I need, not just the ones on the left hand side, like the one, two and two here, but we also need to label the uh, equivalent angles on the other side, five and in this case four, I think I put down the last one. I did indeed, right. So look at the triangle a, O, B, which is the one on the left. A, O and O, B are the same because they're both radiuses of the circle. Because it's in a circle, those two are equal, in which case it's an isosceles triangle. If it's an isosceles triangle, what can we say about the angles 2 and 3? Come on, come on, I haven't got long. Come on, yeah, there we are. 2 is equal to 3. That's exactly what I was thinking. If 2 is equal to 3, well, 1 is the exterior angle. 1 is the exterior angle of that triangle, where 2 and 3 are the interior angles. So what does that say about 1, 2 and 3? No? We haven't got it yet? Oh, come on. 1 is equal to 2 plus 3. Well, if 1 is equal to 2 plus 3, and 2 is equal to 3... Well, then one must be twice the size of two because it's two and three. Well, they're both two, really, aren't they? Three is also two. Uh, no, no. Well, think about it this way. If they're both 30, two and three are 30, then one must be 60. Yeah, you see that? that? They must be the same. So because they're the same, there you are. So one is two plus two. Or you could say one is twice of two. Well, well, you could say, you really should say, because that's the next line in the proof. And if you can say that, if you can say, and it's coming up, here we are, here we are one is two times two, you can also surely say, uh, if the other triangle must be exactly the same, I mean that um, four is um, two times five. And, well, then you proved it, haven't you? Because two plus five is uh, A is B, A, C, and um, 1 plus 4 is B, O, C. And so you proved it. And we get to, uh, we're at Q, QED levels here, aren't we? We're at, uh, we're at finishing off and moving on to the next one. Well, the last one is a proof of Pythagoras. Uh, you know, the two smaller sides squared equal the larger side squared, the hypotenuse squared. Very interesting proof, this. Not, um, not your standard one, but I really love it. Uh, in order to understand it, what you have to do is, well, you can see that the triangle is drawn in a really strange way. We're going to construct three more right angled triangles that form a, an extra large square where C is the centre of the square. How the hell do I mean? Well, basically, 
you build another tr three triangles around so you make a whole square of it. I think I might have slowed this down too much. There you go, that's one of them. Now this is an identical triangle. So the sides of that triangle are A, B and C. There's another one coming up. That's gonna run down the left hand side. There we are, once again. It's an identical triangle. It's congruent with the original triangle. Congruent is the word we use in geometry, meaning things are exactly the same, particularly triangles, A, B and C. I think you can, you know, surely see where the last one's going to go down there at the bottom. And that's also an A, B and a C. Now, this is where the interesting thing starts. Basically, um, what you're trying to prove is a matter of areas. You know that the area, whether you consider it as a big square or whether you consider it as its parts must be the same. Well, the big square has a side of A plus B. So the area of the larger square must be A plus B squared, like a bracket. So let's look at it. The area of the large square must be equal to the area of the small internal square plus the four triangles on the side. There we are, four times the area of the triangles. The area of the triangle is, of course, pi, uh, is a, <laughs> pi r squared is a height, half of heart times width. So that's the big one, a, b squared. That's the big, larger one. The internal part, c squared. c squared for the first one, of course. It's just all sides of c. And then four of the small triangles, four a half AB. Four a half AB gives the area of the, of the four out of the triangles. Now they must be equal to each other because they're the same shape. So now we were to do is, like we do in all maths, is we multiply out the brackets. And we start with the A plus B squared. It's gonna be A squared is going to be the first term. I've obviously slowed this down a bit too much. There we go, A squared plus two AB plus b squared. And that's going to be equal to the c squared, which is already there. And four times a half is two ab. So there's two ab on both sides. Yeah, that's right. If there's two ab on both sides, you can cancel the two ab. And what do you get left with? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Oh, that is beautiful. That is a glorious little proof. Unfortunately, the really strict mathematicians don't like it, but it's certainly good enough for junior cert, and it's an interesting and intelligent way of proving this knotty old problem. Okay, I hope that's uh, all right. I mean, I know the speeds were a bit strange, but I reckoned that was as good a one as I've done. Is it? No, no, no. Actually, it was awful, wasn't it? Awful.